Hello. Here an argument in favor of the main theorem on symmetric polynomials will be presented. Uh, the statement of this main theorem says that any symmetric polynomial is uniquely a polynomial in elementary symmetric polynomials. So let me start by recalling what are elementary symmetric polynomials, say in d variables x1 after xd. So the number j is uh, the sum of all possible products of j different variables. And I um, want to see them once each. So I can do it by requiring that the indices are strictly ordered. And I'm taking the sum of all such products. And the main theorem says that any polynomial which is insensitive to a change in the order of the variables inside it. So this is a scientific notation for the collection of all such polynomials. They form a ring. They are closed under addition and multiplication and subtraction. So the statement is that any such polynomial is uniquely a polynomial uh, expression in this elementary symmetric. which I just called sigma 1 and up to sigma d, so the idea of them, as many as the variables. Um, the argument will consist in really employing the induction. Uh, but the first kind of pre-step is to uh, break an arbitrary symmetric polynomial into smaller chunks. So let's start with something which is symmetric. Again, that is literally that for any possible permutation we can think about of our variables. If we do that and uh, put them in places of the original variables, the result will be the same as the original polynomial. It will not feel the difference. So the first uh, reduction is to break an arbitrary symmetric into homogeneous bits. So what is a homogeneous? Um, a neat way of saying it is to use this functional equation. So let's take our variables and scale them up with the same scaling coefficient of. And a homogeneous polynomial will change in a very predictable way under such a transformation you will just acquire a scaling coefficient oops, not the same d, an arbitrary n. So that is a homogeneous um, of homogeneous degree n. Um, what it means really down to earth in terms of monomials is that it is a sum of uh, monomials with some coefficients, but the monomials will have to be uh, with the property that the combined power of all the variables, the sum of all these powers, is n. Then we obviously have this property and vice versa. So any polynomial is uniquely, any polynomial full stop symmetric or not, is uniquely a sum of homogeneous polynomials and then a symmetric polynomial will have its homogeneous components also symmetric. So that is a reduction to a uh, homogeneous case only. So let's assume that P is homogeneous. Now we assume it in, uh, in, in the proof. And um, uh, just um, let's acknowledge the fact that all elementary symmetric polynomials are homogeneous. And homogeneous polynomials multiplied and added will give us something homogeneous. So we will always have homogeneous polynomials doing algebraic operations with homogeneous polynomials.
So now uh, is the true argument, the body of the argument. We're going to do the induction step um, by decreasing certain um, more fine order than the homogeneous degree. And that is the order on monomials, and that is a perfect order, so will all, all of them will be linearly ordered. So let's just uh, do this definition first on um, the lexicographic, it's called. Introduces a perfect way of ordering all monomials, and um, it's really um, a way of ordering um, important information about monomials, uh, collections of powers. So ordering vectors with natural coordinates, natural number coordinates. So we just say that this vector with coordinates a is, and uh, it's larger than the vector with coordinates b. I have to have d coordinates if either. Uh, well, I will write a general situation. So I'm comparing two vectors, I'm comparing the first coordinate. If the first coordinate is larger um, than the first coordinate of the second vector, then the, se the first vector is declared to be larger. If they're the same, I'm comparing the second coordinates, and then I'm comparing them till uh, they stop being the same. So say I'm going, um, we're seeing the same coordinates till uh, position i, and then at position Next, i plus 1, i should have this inequality. And then this vector is declared to be larger than this. So again, the process of comparison is we start with the first coordinate, we compare them. If they are uh, in this inequality, then we are fine. If they are equal, we proceed to the second and continue. So that is this lexicographic order, which uh, puts in a, stray, in, 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 in a string all uh, possible uh, vectors of powers, uh, hence all possible monomials. So the um, induction will be on the uh, highest such monomial. Let's now employ the condition that our polynomials are symmetric. So the highest monomial of a symmetric Polynomial P. Uh, let's um, record this coefficients, uh, powers of the variables, and then the condition which is inevitable from the symmetry property is that this sequence of natural numbers of these powers will have to be non increasing. So the first should not be smaller than the second, and so on. Well, it's simply because um, of the symmetry of our polynomial, we can change the order of our variables, and hence we can per, per, permute the coordinates in an arbitrary permutation way. So here I should add the quantify for all permutations. And permuting uh, a coordinate vector with, um, with arbitrary permutation, I can always make the first coordinate to be the largest of all and the second co coordinate to be the largest of all remaining, and so on. And in my lexicographical order, it will be larger than anything else. So that's why the highest monomial of a symmetric polynomial will have to have this property. We could look at what the elementary symmetric polynomials have as their highest um, monomials or highest um, vectors of powers. So in sigma 1, um, this polynomial is just the sum of all monomials, and the highest monomial among this is uh, the first one, uh, and the vector will be one and all zeros. Sigma two is uh, the, the sum of all products of two variables, two different variables, and the highest of such products will be x1 and then x2, and the vector of uh, powers will be 1, 1, and then zeros. And all the way down to the very last number d, 
uh, I will have for the very last I will, for the very last symmetric I will have uh, just the product of the variables and of course the um, uh, the vector of the powers is just all ones. So these are the vectors, the highest vectors of our elementary symmetric polynomials. What are we going to do now? If we're going to run the induction step. So we're going to start with a polynomial, take its highest vector, and uh, use this property to match this highest vector with the highest vector in the product of elementary symmetric polynomials. So we'll just need to combine these elementary symmetric polynomials, take them in uh, some combination of some powers, take the product of them, and uh, make it such that the highest vector will be this. And that is easy because um, computing the highest vector in the product is just adding these vectors of powers. After all, the highest monomial in here will have to be multiplied with the highest monomial in here, the highest monomial in here. If they come with powers, then these uh, highest monomials will have to be raised to those powers first. And that is all uh, neatly expressible in terms of the vectors. We just need to add these vectors. That's what happens when we multiply the corresponding monomials. So we'll have to imagine a power here and a power here and all the way down to the very last uh, powers such that the highest uh, vectors with these coefficients will match with this vector. And I'll just write to you the answer and you please check that it works. So the first power will be the difference of the first coordinate and the second. The second power for sigma 2 will be the difference of a2 and a3 and so all the way down to the very last and the very last will be the difference of AD and nothing after, like a zero. So that monomial in elementary symmetric polynomials will have the highest vector just as uh, our polynomial P is given A1 up to AD. And now if we take the difference of our given P and this expression, this monomial in sigmas, its highest term will be smaller, smaller in this lexicographic order. And that is the induction step. We make it smaller and we cannot go forever making it smaller because there's only a finite number of factors which are less than a given one, so we'll have to stop, stop sooner or later. And that is the proof by induction that any elementary, that any symmetric polynomial is a combination of ele elementary symmetric polynomials. And the uniqueness comes from the construction, because at every step we are determined. Uh, what we have to take is completely determined by this equation, and so the result is completely determined. Let me finish by looking at, exam at an example. So let me take um, ah, something easy as my input elementary symmetric, uh, it's just symmetric, so we'll have, uh, say, three variables, x1, x2, x3, and I'll cube them, and take the sum. That makes it symmetric. So that's supposed to be an expression in, in a unique way in elementary symmetric polynomials, sigma1, sigma2, sigma3. So let me write those sigmas, um, then um, sigma1 is Is again the sum. Sigma two is the sum of all products x one, x two, x one, x three, x two, x three, and then sigma three is just a product. So looking at this, I know that the highest um, term is the first one, and the highest vector of that is um, 3 and 0 and 0. And then to uh, create the product of elementary symmetric with the same highest term, well, it's obvious, I just have to take this one, I just have to take this, 1, 0, 0, and take it three times. So cube it, sigma 1 cubed. And the coefficient for this um, is the same as the coefficient in here. Because again, if I cube my sum, if I cube this sum, uh, my uh, leading term will be x1 cubed, matching perfectly with this given one. So that is definitely inside the expression. 
Instead of doing induction as in the proof, we could really kind of imagine how it's supposed to unravel. And uh, other terms, other products of elementary symmetric polynomials will have to have their leading terms not larger than this one, or actually smaller. So let's list all possible vectors which are smaller than this, but they have still uh, to be, they still have to be um, um, subject to this condition. They have to have coordinates forming a non decreasing non increasing sequence so the next after the 3 0 0 will be 2 1 0 what effectively I'm doing I'm taking one of those ones and moving them to the left to the right sorry and I should really not make gaps because again it should be non non increasing at every step and the one after will be one and one and one and that is that is it you can see that no other vectors will be um, non increasing and um, in sum equal to 3 and then lexicographically less than the given one. And now I have to imagine what are the products of elementary symmetric with these leading um, monomials. And for this one, again, that is a recipe. I take 2 minus 1 and that is just the first power of sigma 1. I take uh, 1 minus 0 and that is the first power of sigma 2 and then 0th power of sigma 3, so it is not present. And now I'm not um, seeing immediately what the coefficient is, so I'll just introduce some parameter a here. And then uh, the very last vector will correspond to uh, sigma 3, so that is really the leading um, uh, monomial, the only monomial in sigma 3. So sigma 3 is also in the expression with some unknown coefficient b. And then um, to find this coefficient, here is a useful trick. We could look at it as a functional equation and then evaluate it at some specific values for x1, x2, x3. And this way we can see what a and b have to be. So my first evaluation would be to evaluate on the collection of 1 and 1 and 0. So evaluating at um, the variables 1, 1 and 0, my left hand side will be equal to 2. On the right, I will have uh, sigma 1 on 1, 1, 0. So 1, 1, 0 makes sigma 1 to be 2. So that is on the other side 2, but 2 is to be cubed. And then sigma 1 again is 2. And sigma 2 on 1, 1, 0 will be just uh, 1 and 1, and then all the, other two, all the other two terms are 0. So that will be just 1. And that is with coefficient a. And then sigma 3 is uh, the product of 1 and 1 and 0 into 0. So this is just an equation for a, which after you do the cancellations and all that, gives you the answer negative 3. And then you can find b by again evaluating on a different collection of uh, values for x1, x2, x3. Say so take 1, 1 and 1. Then on the left you will have 3, and sigma 1 will again be 3 on this collection, so it will be 3 cubed. And then sigma 1 will be 3, so you have 3 squared, and sigma 2 will be 3, because 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 will give you 3, so you have 3 cubed again with minus sign. And then you have sigma 3, which on 1, 1, 1 will be equal to 1, so you just have your b. And that is... Um, a perfect answer for B, it is 3. So that is a quick uh, computation exhibiting this general statement that any symmetric polynomial is a combination, unique way, combination of elementary symmetric polynomials of some coefficients. So you could check it uh, by plugging back what sigma 1 is, it is a sum of all axes cubed, then here you have with coefficient negative 3 the sum of all the variables times the sum of uh, all uh, products of pairs of variables and then you add three copies of just the product of all the three variables. So that is um, one example of um, this main theorem on symmetric polynomials. More are to come. See you later.